everybody. Welcome or welcome back to Cooking It Real. If you're new here, my name is Kathy and I'm glad that you could join me in the kitchen. Today I'm going to bring you two recipes that come from my childhood, family favorites for decades and decades. In 1989, my dad presented myself and my three sisters with a cookbook, The Best of Dad. He spent a couple years making this cookbook and my mom typed every single page on a typewriter. Back, this was back before he had a computer or a printer or anything like that. It was truly a labor of love and, you know, emphasis on the labor. Anyway, it was a collection of our family's favorite recipes, his favorite recipes, things that he has made, things that he wanted to make, things that he just thought would be awesome to put in a compilation. And two of those things are staples for our cookouts that we would have in the summertime. My mom's potato salad and her macaroni salad. Classic, two awesome recipes. And I'm gonna share them with you. Now, both of my parents have passed as well as two of my three sisters. So now when I look at this book, it means so much more to me even than it did when I first got it. And it was quite an extraordinary thing. So right on page 20, we got Ma's potato salad and Ma's macaroni salad. I can't wait to share them with you. I can't wait to eat them again. Okay, the recipe calls for six medium potatoes. For serving six, I have three kind of large-ish russet potatoes or baking potatoes. That's what I'm going to use today. And the recipe says, cook together the six medium potatoes and the three unpeeled eggs until the potatoes are tender. Drain, then cool. So this is how I remember my mom doing it. She would put the raw eggs right in with the potatoes. Now I'm being very ginger here. And this is cold water that we're starting with. Whenever you're cooking potatoes, you always want to start with cold water. The reason for that is if you start, if you put a raw potato into boiling water or something like that, the outsides will cook before the insides. If you start everything cool, it will all cook from the inside out and you'll have perfect potatoes every time. Okay, our potatoes are up to a boil. And so now we're just gonna cook these until the potatoes are tender and we will check their doneness with a knife. And then we'll drain them and cool them. All right, let's test this with the knife. Yep, that goes all the way through. I'm calling it. Altogether, it's been 20 minutes. Now it depends, for you, it's gonna depend on the size of your potatoes. I'm gonna drain this pot, run some cool water over it, and then just let it sit and cool off until we're ready for it. Now these potatoes, they're still just very, very slightly warm. Uh, I remember my mom would sometimes make them like the day before or early in the day. And this is, she would just, she would have a, a big pot of potatoes because, you know, this is just gonna be for Will and I and it'll last us a few days for sure. And uh, we don't need that much, but she would make a huge pot of potatoes because if we were gonna have a cookout, a lot of times we would invite um, Auntie Betty and Uncle Tommy, those were my dad's sister and brother, or uh, we might invite Auntie Celia and Donald. That was my mom's sister and her husband. Um, you know, or if we had uh, relatives in from out of state and out of town, um, we would have a cookout if it was in the summer. And my mom would always, like she said, cook for an army. But that's just the way she did it. All right, that's one. And I do, I have, you know, I can see her now. 
just sitting at the kitchen table with her big pot of potatoes, just taking the skins off like this with a paring knife. They slip off very easily. And I was wondering, you know, why didn't she peel them before she cooked them? I don't know. She just did it this way. So that's the way I'm doing it. Now, you know me, uh, or if you don't know me, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I tweak recipes all the time. Even my mom's recipes, even my dad's recipes, even, you know, ancient family secrets, I sometimes put my own spin on them. And so, you know, that's what I like to do. And, you know, a lot of times recipes like this evolve over time, you know, like uh, as far as adding raw onion to it. Now, I always loved the raw onion. I always loved it. That was one of my favorite parts of the potato salad. If you don't like raw onion, please don't feel like you have to put it in. I like the bite of it. I like the crunch of it. And I just like it. Now, if you wanted to uh, have more of a mellow onion flavor, you might take your chopped onions and uh, run them under hot water for a few minutes, like really hot water, and that would take some of the sting out of it. Uh, you could use red onion and do the same, or green onion, or just leave the, the raw onion out and use some onion powder. You know, my mom put onion powder in everything. I know I say that all the time, but it's true. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take these peels, and I'm going to give them to the worms. Okay. Or to the compost pile, one or the other. It's perfectly fine to put cooked potato skins in your compost because it's not cooked with any oil or anything like that. Next thing we're going to do is the eggs. Let's see how these turned out. It's always a mystery. When I boil eggs, how are they going to turn out? We'll just have to see. All right. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Now these eggs cooked for 20 minutes, which in my mind, I would, I would never hard boil an egg for 20 minutes. That's the way my mom did it and I loved it. So we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, this is peeling pretty good though, I must say. Don't make a liar out of me. Come on. Come off nice, you peels. How do you make your hard-boiled eggs? Let me know in the comments. That's a little bit I'm going to go back for. You know, another thing that my sister said was that her son and husband don't like eggs in their potato salad. I was like, that's my favorite part, is the egg. To me, it's like it should be one egg for each potato. At least, maybe even more eggs. And someone might say, well then, it's more like egg salad than potato salad. And I say, yeah, so, right? All right, let's cut this. We got all the shell off, yeah. I'm gonna rinse that. I'm gonna rinse that. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Now see, it has a little bit of that dark uh, around the edge. I, I normally, I don't normally cook my eggs that hard that they would get that little green around the edge, but it's only a little bit, so I'm going to let it go. But uh, let's peel the rest of these eggs. The worms get the eggshells too. All right, let's see. Let's cut these babies. Very nice. See, they're, they're done, but they're not super soft, which sometimes if they were a little bit softer even, it wouldn't bother me. Sometimes my potato salad has a bit of a mashed quality 
Did I already say that? I don't know. But that doesn't bother me either. Oh, these are a little bit sticky. So I like to make them into not gigantic chunks. I used to make this as a menu item at the brewery and uh, have a couple of brewery customers, regulars, very sweet, sweet young ladies. You know who you are, Heather, April, that really like this potato salad. No, I mean, they really like it. <laughs> very gratifying. All right, let's get these in. See how these chunks are? Yeah, see that one's a little big, a little big for me. Nope, I'm gonna cut them down to size. Make sure I get everybody just the way I like it. Now, you know, the size of your potatoes, depending on the size of your potatoes, will depend on how long it cooks. Okay, if you're using, like, say, um, red new potatoes or uh, Yukon gold potatoes or, or just a smaller potato, uh, it'll cook, like I said, this took 20 minutes, these, these big russets, but it will probably cook quicker. Just use that knife test. That will never... That'll never steer you wrong. You see any dark spots like that? This is just a little bit of skin left over. A little dark spot. I'll just take that out. Just take that, take that whole chunk out. To the worms. Now, if you're new here and you hear me talking about giving things to the worms, you might think, what is she talking about? Well, my husband and I have um, a garden and we also have a compost pile, but we also are um, involved in what they call vermiculture, which is the growing and feeding of earthworms. And we have earthworms that we feed that make worm castings for us, which is a fantastic source of natural and organic fertilizer. Love them little wormies. So when I say I'm giving it to the worms, that's what I'm talking about. Cut these up. I do have um, some more hard boiled eggs in the, free, in the fridge. I might just take one and throw an extra one in. That way I can show you more of what hard boiled eggs should look like. Now, you don't have to do it like my mom did. You don't have to cook the eggs with the potatoes. You can cook them separately. And in that case, what I do is I take um, a pan and I get some water boiling and I use a uh, wire scoop, a spider, if you will, to lower the uh, raw eggs into the boiling water. And I let them boil for, depending on the size of the egg, a minute or two. And then I turn off the stove. I put a lid on the eggs. And I let them sit for about 16 minutes. And that usually does the trick. All right, let me get another egg. When we boil eggs in advance, when they're done, we use a Sharpie and put an X on them so we know that they're not raw, they're cooked. So if you were gonna be making eggs for breakfast, you would wanna take an egg and try to crack it and boing. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, see, this one has a tiny bit, but not near as much.
All right. What else we got here? We got our potatoes. We got our eggs. I have a large onion, which is uh, really the other half of onion for my macaroni salad. That goes in. Wonderful. And the recipe says salt and pepper to taste. So I am going to start with one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper and one teaspoon of onion powder or granulated onion because like I say my mom put it in everything. I think that's why everything always tasted so good. I'm going to give that a tiny mix. go now she said we need a quarter cup of mayonnaise which when she would make it would be miracle whip but i'm using mayonnaise duke's mayonnaise and this is about i need a little bit more i think she says in the recipe a quarter cup or more i think in this case or more put this here in case we need it let's see Give this a mixy mix. Another couple tablespoons. I think that's going to do it. Now you can make this in advance as well. Just keep it in the fridge. And if you're having a cookout and uh, you're going to be eating outside, and you want to have your food outside as well you need to keep this chilled so you know there's a couple different ways you can do that if you want it to still look pretty and be available for your guests to just uh, take like a buffet setup type of thing uh, you can take a like a roasting pan uh, you can use like a, a an aluminum one you know a foil one or a regular roasting pan and you want to fill it up with ice and you want to put your bowl of uh, potato salad or macaroni salad in that bowl. And um, that will keep it cool for the serving time. But as soon as, you know, everyone's been served, you want to get it back into the fridge. All right, I'm going to take a taste of a little bit of egg, a little bit of potato salad, test for salt. Come on. Mm. That's good. I think that it could use a little bit more seasoning. So I'm going to put in about another half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. You do you, as usual, as always, you do you. If you're using Miracle Whip or another type of what they call salad dressing instead of mayo, um, there's a little bit more flavor to that, or tang, you know, so you might not need to add any additional seasoning. Let's see. Get another piece. Mmm. That'll do it. So, get my serving dish nice and brightly colored to offset the whiteness. You know, if you wanted to add some color to this, you could um, chop up some parsley or you could sprinkle it with some paprika, whatever floats your boat. Oh, this smells so good. I don't have any parsley right now, so I'm going to use a little bit of smoked paprika. Ooh, oh, that's pretty. There. Yeah, just put that on top. Or you can mix it in. Or you could put cayenne pepper. You could put, you could put whatever you like. That's the best part about cooking it real. Make it yours. All right, so cover on this into the fridge until serving time.
This is the extent of our pea harvest this year. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pods. Eh, better than nothing. They just didn't take off this year. We've had so much rain. That could be why. But these are the peas I'm going to use in the macaroni salad. So let's just get these things opened up and have a look. Actually, there was one more that we opened and it was so good. Let's see, come on now. Look at these. The recipe calls for four ounces of frozen peas. That's a half a cup, uh, four ounces. This is nowhere near a half a cup. I'd say it's barely a quarter cup, so maybe two ounces of pea. But what this lacks in amount, it absolutely makes up for in freshness and flavor. So we're just going to go with it because we're cooking it real. All right. Now my mother's recipe called for one large onion. I think she would call this enormous onion. So I might not use all of this. A couple stalks of celery. I've got three here. That I remember about the salad. A half a cup of peas. I only got a quarter, like I said, but I remember that about the salad. And pickles, a uh, dill pickle and pickle juice. Well, I don't have any dill pickles but I do have some pickled tomatoes and peppers that we got from the garden uh, last season. So I'm going to use that instead, cooking it real. And the recipe also called for radish. And I don't ever remember radishes growing up. So I don't have any radishes either because radish season is over. Uh, but I'm going to use a little bit of red pepper. And I think that will give a nice pretty color and it'll be another crunch factor which the radishes would be. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna add some salt to my water. And we need half a pound of elbow macaroni, which is two cups. I'm going to put that right on in. The package directions say cook for six to eight minutes. So I'm going to split the difference and make it 10 minutes. I'm not 10, seven, seven minutes. And when I have about a minute left, I'm going to throw these beautiful little garden peas in there just for like 45 seconds, 30 seconds, something like that. We can definitely eat them raw. They're so sweet and delicious, but we're just going to give them a little cook. Now, if you are using frozen peas, uh, you would want to throw your half cup in at around the same time with like less than a minute to go because the peas, frozen peas are cooked. You just need to uh, defrost them and that's a good way to do it. All right, so see you in seven minutes. Okay, one minute left. In go these little sweet little bees. Bye, bees. Whoops. There we go. Little cool water. There we go. Let's get our macaroni and peas into the bowl, to the big mixing bowl, that is. Okay. This stuff has cooled down nicely. Now, if I had twice as many peas 
this would be beautiful but that's okay all right i'm gonna add my celery uh my red pepper and my onion everybody in give that a little bit of a mix Ooh, that looks pretty now of course you do you if you don't like raw onion leave it out if you want to add green onion red onion whatever you like that's the way to do it okay I'm also gonna add the recipe says salt and pepper to taste I'm gonna start uh, I put some salt in the water for the pasta but I'm gonna do like oh a teaspoon of salt and I'm gonna do a teaspoon of pepper you can do more or less I also have a teaspoon of onion granulated onion and granulated garlic it's not in the recipe but honest and true my mom added onion powder garlic powder to everything so in it goes in it goes all right gonna give that a little mixy mix now the next ingredient is the pickles so if I had a big dill pickle I would cut that up and put it in my macaroni salad I do not I do have like I said before these are pickled tomatoes from the garden I'm just gonna take some out we also got some banana peppers in there basically what we're going for here is like the vinegar okay so I'm trying to think of what looks like about a pickles worth does that look like a pickles worth to you yeah probably let's chop it up now if you don't like dill pickles you want to use sweet pickles you can definitely do that I'm just gonna make this oh this smells so good you can use sweet pickles uh, you can use like gherkins or what else or you can do like like I'm doing you can use relish you know pickled relish or uh, pickled pickled peppers uh, if you don't want to use pickles don't have to use pickles at all I would suggest using a little bit of vinegar because the recipe says to use three tablespoons of pickle juice which is what I'm going to do wait let me get those in there first in you go all right that's all oh no nope, no nope. gotta get the juice gotta get the juice all right I got a tablespoon right here so I'm gonna do one two and three that's going to give it a tanginess and a deliciousness and it also says to use a quarter cup of mayonnaise so i'm going to use my yummy dukes mayonnaise and i'm just gonna guesstimate that that's a quarter of a cup we'll see we can use more if we need to i'll give this a mix Now what you're going to do is uh, you're going to put this in the refrigerator and chill it down oh i think that's going to be just perfect amount of mayonnaise you don't want it to be too 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 much all right so we're going to put this in the fridge and we're going to chill it until we need it uh you know an hour two hours 24 hours you can make this ahead absolutely no problem in fact it's probably better made ahead uh, I am going to get a little spoon, though, and taste for seasoning right now just to see if I need a little more salt and pepper. Hmm. Nope. That's perfect. This is going to be my serving bowl. When I have uh, dishes like this that is mostly a light color, I like to use a bright colored bowl. I just like the contrast so I'm gonna put this in the bowl that we're gonna serve it in and then I'm gonna get it into the fridge and we'll do a tasting later I was talking to my sister Teresa yesterday about this and about the macaroni salad and she was not a fan of it as a kid and uh, 
I don't even know if she makes it now. I didn't even ask her that. We also talked about the potato salad too, like I said. But um, she might like this. We'll have to see. All right, I would cover this with plastic, put it in the fridge, and soon we'll be ready to serve. Look who's here, my favorite taster. Man, I'm hungry. Good. What are you gonna try first? Potato I'm salad? Trying the potato salad. I'll take a taste too. Mmm. Nice onion. Mm. Paprika goes with the potato very well. Mm. Macaroni salad? Hold that up a little bit. He's got two of our garden sweet peas. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't too much um, peas. Only got like less than a quarter cup. Big flavor though. Mm. Very tasty. You know what is in there? Our pickled tomatoes. Or I should say your pickled tomatoes. Mm. It's good. So, keep on making it, right? Mm. Until I tell you to stop. Well, thanks everybody for joining me today and joining us right now. And I hope you make this dish. And I hope to see you next time. Till then, keep cooking it real. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yum!